All right, so the next integration technique that we're going to learn is called U substitution. So this is actually a lot easier than what students tend to make it sometimes, and it's because you got to think about what type of uh, problem are you given in terms of the form uh, of the um, of the expression. So let's just dive right into it. So if u equals g of x uh, is a differentiable function whose range is an interval i and f is continuous on i, then the integral of f of g of x times g prime of x dx is equal to the integral of f of u du. Now, here's what this is saying, all right? So I'm going to break this down. Right here, notice we have a composite function, okay? So we could have something like 2x squared plus 3 to the fourth power, okay? So that's a composite function where g of x is equal to 2x squared plus 3, and then f of x is equal to, uh, we'll just call it u to the fourth power, all right? So if you can recognize that, number one, you have a composite function that you're trying to take the integral of, and, and this is the huge part, and you contain... So let me extend that out a little bit. And you contain the derivative of that inside function. So in this case, we'll call it, you know, we'll just call it x. All right. So if you have a composite function and you have the derivative of the inside function, not worried about a constant, just, just the variable itself, then what we are allowed to do is we can rewrite this integral on the left hand side which is extremely difficult to integrate as the integral of f of u du which is something much easier for us to integrate so using what i have on the board here i'm just going to rewrite it and i'm going to show you how this works all right so what we're going to do and the first couple of homework problems are going to look like this where i'm going to tell you what u is so like here's our first example here we're going to let u equal 2x squared plus 3, then du is going to equal 4x dx, and x dx equals 1 fourth du, all right? Find the integral of x times 2x squared plus 3, all raised to the fourth power dx, all right? So I'm giving you, like right now, I'm giving you all the information. But like I said, I'll do one or two more of these, and then I'm going to show you just how to do this. So if we really wanted to, I'm, and you could totally do this, you could definitely take the quantity 2x squared plus 3 to the fourth. You could expand that to get a fourth or a six degree polynomial, and then you can multiply it by x. And distribute all that and you'd have this one big polynomial that you can take the integral of each individual function of x uh, using the sum or difference property that we learned uh, uh, in the previous section you could do that if you wanted to however we could also simplify this just by using u substitution so the first thing i'm going to do all right is i'm going to i'm going to let u equal 2x plus 3. so i'm going to rewrite this as the integral and instead of writing the quantity 2x squared plus 3, I'm going to write u and raise it to the fourth power. All right? So there's my first substitution. Now, the second substitution is going to be du. So du is going to be 4x dx. Now, if you're wondering where I'm getting this from, I am just looking right back up here on my definition right here. That's all I'm doing, just rewriting it. That's it. Okay? And then finally, x dx I'm going to rewrite that as 1 fourth du. So now what I can do is write the integral of u to the fourth times 1 fourth du. And this entire problem with these substitutions just turns out to be the integral of u to the fourth times 1 fourth du. And we know that if you have a constant, you could pull it out front when you're integrating as long as everything's being multiplied. So I get 1 fourth times the integral of u to the fourth du. 
which is going to be equal to one fourth times u to the fifth over five plus c. All right. And then finally, I'm going to go ahead and distribute. I get u to the fifth over 20 plus c again, because remember, one fourth times c is c over four, but it's still a constant, and that's fine. And then the very last move is we want to make our backward substitution. In other words, we know what u equals because we let u equal 2x squared plus 3 earlier. So we're going to get 2x, 2x squared plus 3 r raised to the fifth over 20 plus c. And there is our first u substitution. All right? Now, sometimes I think it's easier just to like just dive right in on one. So let me show you another one here, okay? And this is this is one that like we we really can't do yet. All right. We're gonna go ahead and integrate sine squared theta, cosine squared theta, d theta. All right. And I'm gonna let u equal sine theta. Now in calc two, you will learn which one of these two things that you want to let u equal. But for now, we're just we're, we're kind of just, you know, getting used to this. So we're going to let u equal sine theta. And I'm going to tell you, let du equal cosine theta d theta. Okay. Now, if this is the case, and remember, we want to rewrite our integral. So it's f of u du. So wherever I see sine theta, I'm going to replace it with the letter u. Now, remember, sine squared theta is really sine theta to the second power. Okay? So let's rewrite this as the integral of u to the second power. And then instead of writing cosine theta d theta, we're going to now write du. So we took an integral that was sine squared theta, cosine theta, d theta, and we converted it into the integral of u squared du. Now, when we integrate u squared du, we're gonna get one third u to the third plus c, and then finally, make your substitution back into the original variable, which is sine theta cubed plus c, and another way you can write this is one third sine cubed theta plus c. Okay? Now, the one thing that I do want us to do is I want us to kind of take a step back and start looking at this in a more general sense. Okay? So here's another one here. And this one, I am not going to tell you what u is and what du is. What we're going to do, all right, is we're actually going to find it. Okay? So here's our first error. Here's our first example. We're going to do the integral of x squared times sine x to the third dx. All right. Now, if you try to do this problem using the techniques that we know, which which uh, let me let me go back and show you the techniques that we know. This is in the previous video. So here 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 are the techniques right here. These are all the rules that we know right now. Notice you do not see anything here that says anything along the lines of the integral of x squared times sine x to the third dx. Like that rule <laughs> in this table just doesn't exist. So then the question becomes, okay, well, how do we approach this? So the first thing I'm going to do, all right, is off to the right-hand side. I'm just going to write that property that we learned earlier. So we got the composite function f of g of x times g prime of x dx. And we know that if we have that, we can rewrite this as f of u du. Okay? So hopefully we're okay with that. All right? So if you look at what we have here, notice I have x squared being multiplied by sine x cubed that is also being multiplied by dx. And most importantly, 
sine x to the third power, that right there is our composite function. So let me go ahead and let me let me label this stuff. So in our composite function, all right, and, and just to give, a, instead of me just doing like algebraically, I'll do the picture again because I think sometimes if you're like me, you like to see things visually. We know that in our composite function, and we always label our composite functions like f of g of x, g of x would go first, f of x would go second. So uh, our very inside function would be, you know, x to the third power or a quantity raised to the third power. So if we put x in our, in our calculator, x would fall down into here. The output of g of x would be x to the third. And then this output of g of x is now the input of f of x, which would be sine of something. And in this case, the x cubed would come down into here. And then there is your composite function right there. So if you can just kind of see that, and, and I know when I say if you can kind of see that, for me, it's really easy to see these things because I've been doing this for so long. However, since you're learning this, you really need to think about what composite functions represent. But anyways, if we can focus just on that sine x cubed and recognize that it's the composite function, the only thing that we're really concerned with here is do we have the derivative of the inside function multiplied by dx? So our derivative, our inside function, is the g of x. It's x cubed. And we know the derivative of x cubed is going to be 3x squared, dx. Okay? So, and if you look right here, notice we have the x squared dx in our problem, which means we are given the green light to use u substitution. Therefore, what I'm going to do here is this. I'm going to let u equal x cubed. I let it equal the, the inside composite function. du, the derivative of u, is going to equal the derivative of x to, x to the third, which is 3x squared, with respect to x. So we're just going to put 3x squared dx, which is a chain rule. Back in uh, section 2.9, it's like differentials, all right? And there's one more thing that I do. Some calc professors do this. Some calc professors do not. Personally, the way that I like to approach this is, and I'm going to use my highlighter so you know exactly what I'm talking about. I see the x squared dx, and I want, that, I want this side, the right-hand side, to match it perfectly. So the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do one additional step. I'm going to divide both sides by 3. So u equals x to the third, one third du equals x to the second dx. And right here are going to be what we call our u substitutions. All right. So I'm just going to rewrite the problem, clean this up and make it look nice and pretty for us. So here's the problem. The integral of x squared times sine of x cubed dx. Off to the right, we're going to let u equal x cubed. du is going to equal 3x squared dx. And then, listen, I'm old school. I will take the extra five seconds to write this out because then I know it's right. I won't have to do a lot of mental math. So I'm just going to rewrite it as u equals x to the third. Divide both sides by 3 for the du. That gives me 1 third. Du x squared dx. And I'm going to come into my problem. And I'm going to make my substitutions. The integral of sine of u multiplied by 1 third du. Notice the sine of x cubed. This right here was our composite function that I rewrote as sine u. And then the x squared dx, I rewrote it as one third du, which is my differential part. So now all I have to do is integrate this. I'm going to pull the one third out front. 
So that's going to give me one third sine of u du. And then using our table with the with the uh, trig functions, I know the derivative of sine is cosine. So, or I'm sorry, did I say derivative of sine? I'm sorry. I meant the integral of sine. I meant the integral of sine, which is uh, it's going to be negative one third cosine of u plus c. And then finally, I'm just going to make my backward substitution to give us negative one third cosine of u, which is x to the third, plus c. And there is our first example using u substitution. Now, to be honest with you, the only way that this gets more difficult, okay, is in the sense that you may have to rewrite something algebraically, or you may have, or finding the composite function may be a little bit more difficult. But at the end of the day, it is not it, it is not that hard. All right. So, um, I say that I say that tongue in cheek. I mean, I remember learning this and it was like, Oh, what is going on? But with practice and patience comes, um, discipline and knowledge, which is like my soapbox speech of the day. So good luck with that one. But anyways, let me show you some more here. Okay. So here's another example. Let's integrate. The quantity x squared plus 1 times the quantity x to the third plus 3x to the fourth times dx. Okay? Now, from here, notice we have two completely different functions of x that we are trying to multiply. We have x squared plus 1 in the first uh, binomial. And then we have x cubed plus 3x raised to the fourth in the second binomial. And hopefully you can see right here, this is our composite. That's our composite function. So what we're hoping for is this. What we hope is the derivative of x to the third plus 3x is inside of our problem. Now, here's what I mean. When we take the derivative of the inside function, we're going to get 3x squared plus 3. Now, if you look at this, 3x squared plus 3, on the surface, that's not in our original problem. However, if I factor out a 3, notice there's my x squared plus 1, and that is exactly what that is right there. So this is another example of where you got to, you know, just because it's not instantly there, you got to think, maybe I got to do something algebraically. So because we have what we need, the x squared plus 1, I'm going to go ahead and say green light, use substitution. So let's just rewrite the problem real quick. Make it look nice and pretty again. Now, off to the right-hand side, I'm going to let u equal x cubed plus 3x. Therefore, du is going to equal 3x squared plus 3. We know that we can factor out that 3. So, u equals x cubed plus 3x. du is going to equal 3 times x squared plus 1 dx. And then finally, divide both sides by 3. And I'm just going to write this nice and neat. And you don't have to write these steps every single time, all right? Once you get good at this and you kind of see what's going on, that's when you can kind of, you know, sh I guess, skip some steps. Me, personally, I write everything out. Finally, u equals x cubed plus 3x. One-third du is going to equal the quantity x squared plus 1 dx. And here are going to be my u substitutions that I'm going to make. So when I go to rewrite my problem, I get the integral. Wherever I see x cubed plus 3x, I'm going to replace it with the letter u. So this is going to be u to the fourth. And then the, and I'll, I'll color code this one so you can see what I'm talking about. Wherever I see x cubed, or I'm sorry, x squared plus 1 times dx, which is right here. Here's my x squared plus 1 times dx. Even though they're not written next to each other, the commutative property says we don't care the order in which you multiply things. So I'm just going to write times 
one third du. Then I'll pull the one third out front. Oops, I'm already integrating. I'm, my brain's moving too fast. So I get one third times the integral of u to the fourth, which turns out to be one third u to the fifth over five plus c. And then just to clean this up and make our original substitution, we're going to get 1 15th times the quantity x cubed plus 3x to the fifth, oops, plus c. All right? And that's how you do u substitution. Like I said, easier said than done sometimes. All right? You just got to be careful with this. That's all. All right, let's try another one here. Let's do, let's do a, let's do a, one that looks hard, but it's really not. Uh, the integral of cosine pi over x over x squared dx. So I know this one looks crazy, but it's really not crazy. All right. So take a minute, try to think uh, to yourself, like, what is the composite function here? If you need to pause the video, then unpause it once you get your answer. But if you thought that the composite function is cosine of pi over x, you would be correct. The inside function, g of x, is going to be pi over x. And then the outside function, f of x, would be just that cosine of x where you would make this substitution if you were to draw the function mapping little diagram that I drew earlier. All right? But I'm going to go ahead and erase this. Because here is what we're banking on, all right? If we let u equal that inside function, which is pi over x, all right? And we take this derivative, we want to see the derivative inside the original problem. The issue with this <clears throat> is it's not going to look that pretty yet. And that's because sometimes we're just so used to just you know, it's like bowling. Sometimes we do math like we do bowling. Just set up the pins, give me the bowling ball, I'm going to throw it down a lane as hard as I can, and hopefully I get them all right. Whereas sometimes here we need to be a little bit more careful. So watch what happens here. First, when I go to take the derivative of u, all right, I need to rewrite this as pi times x to the negative one half. That's the first thing I need to do. Because remember, I got to use my power rule for that. Second, when I take the derivative, all right, I'm going to get negative pi over x to the negative 2 dx. Now, initially on the surface, this looks ugly, and I agree with you. Also, if you look on the left-hand side, if you look over here in your problem, we really don't have x to the negative 2 staring at us, okay? But what we do have is a, is a rewritten form of it. In other words... Just remember that anytime you have a negative exponent, you can make it a positive exponent by reciprocating it. Also, over on the left-hand side of my problem right here, I'm going to rewrite this. And nobody says you can't do this. In fact, you know, I try to teach this as early as I can so students can start to see that you can rewrite cosine of pi over x over x squared dx. It's just simply cosine of pi over x multiplied by 1 over x squared dx. And now hopefully you can see that I'm starting to build this du thing that I needed just by, just by doing a couple basic algebra properties. And the problem is we don't use these algebra properties enough. And by the time you get the calculus, sometimes we're, we know how to do them and we remember how to do them, but you're not disciplined enough to like, see them and go, oh, that's what it is. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. So, I mean, and I, maybe it's the way we teach math. Maybe we need to change that. But uh, that's, I, try, I try my hardest to, like, keep these little things uh, progressing as, like, students take my classes. If, they, if they, they vibe well with me and they like the way I teach things. But anyways, let's get back to this. So I'm going to go ahead and just rewrite it, make it look nice and neat. If I were doing this on my own, I wouldn't be doing any of this. I would just go right into it. All right. So here's our rewritten over here on the left. On the right-hand side, we know we let u equal pi x to the negative 1. 
we know we got du equals negative pi over x squared dx. All right, and I'm gonna do one more thing here, okay? I'm gonna do one more thing. I am going to divide both sides by negative pi, because remember, I like my du to look exactly the same. And it all depends on who you get, you know, if the professor writes it or not. Some of them, they don't. They just think you automatically assume it. I do not. So, over here on the right-hand side, and I'm sorry, I know you're probably writing a lot. But what's nice about this is you can always just pause the video. And here we go. By dividing both sides by negative pi, we end up getting negative 1 over pi du equals 1 over x squared dx. Now, we could totally use, use substitution here. So, let's do the integral of cosine of u. And instead of writing 1 half x squared dx, I'm going to multiply this by negative 1 half pi du. And the fun part, pull the negative 1 half pi out front because that's a constant. Let's integrate the cosine of u du. And uh, off the top of my head, I forget what that is. So I'm going to have to look that up real quick. Cosine is sine. Perfect. See, none of us are perfect. So this is going to give me negative 1 half pi sine of u plus c. And then finally, just go back in and make our original substitution. We get negative 1 half pi times the cosine of pi over x plus c. All right. And I, I really hope this is starting to gel a little bit with these more, because I'll be honest, these I think these examples are a little bit more difficult than like the ones that the, uh, the book goes over in the reading. Like the, the ones in the book, they give you like really simple ones and it kind of defeats the purpose of like what we're trying to, to uh, convey here. In this next example here, we're really going to show why u substitution is so powerful. I'm going to do this two ways. First way, algebraically. Second way, just using u substitution. And you're going to see just how much easier one of the two ways is. So here's our first way. If I'm just using algebra, I'm going to rewrite this problem. And I'm going to do it in a very specific manner so you can see what's happening here. I'm going to separate this fraction by writing it as secant squared x over 1 and multiplying this by 1 over tangent squared x dx. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this as 1 over cosine squared x, because that's what secant squared x is. And then 1 over tangent squared x is really cotangent squared x. But instead of writing cotangent squared x, I'm going to write cosine squared over sine squared x dx. All right. So let me make like a little note here. This is really cotangent squared x. All right. Now, the cosine sequence, or cosine, see, oh, it's so hard to say. Cosine squared terms reduce to give us the integral of 1 over sine squared x dx, which turns out to be nothing more than just the integral of cosecant squared x dx. If we go back into our notes, we could just go ahead and rewrite this as the integral of cosecant squared x uh, dx is equal to negative cotangent x plus c. Now, that is just really understanding all of the trig identities and just seeing things very quickly. Sometimes it's not that possible, though. All right, so let's do the same exact problem, but then let me show you, like, what happens, and this is going to happen, all right? And I want you to be aware of, like, what you can do. So it's the same problem. Same problem here, all right? And um, in this case, seeing the composite function, I think, is a little bit more challenging than the previous examples. So when that situation arises where you're like, oh, I don't even know what my composite function is, the best thing to do, honestly, is just let u equal something. So if I let u equal 
secant squared x, all right? If I let u equal secant squared x, and I go to take this derivative, all right? du is going to equal 2 secant x. Actually, you know what? I even wrote, give me one sec. I kind of wrote this backwards here. It's just secant x, okay? Because you got to remember, and this is my fault. See, I'm moving too fast, and I need to slow down. There we go. That looks a lot better. So if I let u equal secant x, the derivative of secant x is secant x tangent x dx. And notice, you, you have to have secant x times tangent x in order to use substitution here. And since you do not have that, your tangent is in the denominator, letting u equal secant x is a bad move. But in reality, it's actually a really good move because you know this doesn't work. So let's use the same idea. All right. So here's secant squared x. And now what we're going to do, oh, that looks terrible. We're going to let u equal tangent x. Now the derivative of tangent is secant squared x dx. And if you notice, you definitely have that in your problem. You got it right here. There it is. So what's really nice about this, all right, is if we just took the time just to kind of figure out what to let u equal, watch how easy this problem becomes. This is going to be nothing more than just the integral of 1 over u squared du because wherever you see tangent, replace it with the letter u. And wherever you see secant squared x dx, replace it with du. You don't have to worry about solving for coefficients or anything. So just to make this easier for ourselves, we're going to integrate u to the negative 2 du, which is going to give us negative 1. Actually, let me, let me be more specific. u to the negative 1 over negative 1 plus c. And then when we go to rewrite our answer, making our substitution, we're going to get negative 1 times uh, u to the 1 half, so that's going to be tangent x all raised to the negative 1 half plus c, but we know tangent x to the negative 1 half is nothing more than just negative cotangent x plus c. So you get the same exact answer. It's just... um. Do you want to use u substitution or do you not want to use u substitution? It's entirely up to you. So the next couple examples we're going to do involve, what about definite integrals? Now, recall definite integrals have the form from the integral from a to b of f of x dx equals some function f of b evaluated at b and a itself okay and if you're asking me can we still use u substitution in this and i'm going to say absolutely all right it's just you need to be careful all right and the reason for that is that we are substituting two different variables More importantly, with different functions. So you got to remember that the limits of integration, our limits of integration, A and B, all right, are really X values. So if you make, if you make a transformation from X and you map it into U, you are changing your limits of integration as well. Now, there are two ways to go about this. I'm going to do one problem the same way just so you can see how it works. It's not difficult at all, but you'll see that there's advantages to both. And there is no, this is what you do every single time. I wish that was the case, but it's just not. So here's another example. And uh, we're just going to integrate the integral from 0 to 1 of the cube root. 
a 1 plus 7x dx. Now, we're going to let u equal 1 plus 7x. du, therefore, is going to equal 7 multiplied by dx, because notice the derivative of 1 plus 7x is 7dx. Since I have a constant right here, or coefficient, I'm sorry, I'm going to divide both sides by 7 to make this u equals 1 plus 7x. 1 7th du equals dx. And now I'm going to go ahead and use u substitution here. So I get the integral of u to the 1 3rd multiplied by 1 7th du. I can pull the 1 7th out front to give me 1 7th times the integral of u to the 1 3rd du. Now, here's where you need to make a decision. All right, here's where we need to make a decision here. If you want to change your limits of integration, you can. So at this moment in time, we can change our upper and lower limits of integration. Now, you, one thing you do got to remember is your limits of integration, and let me scroll out, let me uh, zoom out here so you can see them. Our limits of integration on the original problem are for the variable x. So what we said was, and, and, if you, and this is if you want to change. So if you want to change, here's what you need to do. We'll do the upper limit first. Since we let u equal 1 plus 7x, then what we are going to do is we're going to say the upper limit is going to equal 1 plus 7 times 1, which is 8. So therefore, directly above, I can put an 8 right there for my upper limit. Now, my lower limit is going to equal 1 plus 7 times 0, which is 1. And that's going to be my new lower limit. You are 100% allowed to do this every single time if you wanted. Okay? Now, if you do this, hopefully it makes your math later on a little bit easier. It may, it may not. Okay? If you did not want to do this, all you have to do is just integrate like you normally would, convert it back to x's, and then use the original limits of integration, which I'll do for us. For now, I'm sticking with my u substitution integration. So we get 1 7th times integral from 1 to 8 of u to the 1 3rd du. And when I integrate this, I'm going to get 1 7th multiplied by u to the 4 over 3 with a 3 over 4. Because remember, you're, you're adding one to the exponent and you're dividing it by that, which is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So it's 1 7th times the quantity 3 over 4 u to the 4 over 3 power. And we're going to evaluate this between 8 and 1. So that's going to give us 3 over 28, 1 7th times 3 over 4 is 3 over 28, multiplied by 8 to the 4 thirds minus 1 to the 4 thirds, which is 3 over 28. And if I recall, 8 to the 4 thirds power should be 16, and 1 to the 4 thirds is 1. So we're just going to get... 3 over 28 times 15, which would be 45 over 28. So notice here in this example, and I'm going to scroll out. Notice here, as soon as we use that u substitution, we made a deci decision and we said, you know what? We're going to change our limits of integration. And we're going to stick with the letter u throughout the entire problem. Totally allowed to do that. But let's say you didn't do this. Okay, let's say you didn't do this. 
<clears throat> excuse me. So I'm going to write this in a different color. We'll write it in blue, I guess. I like blue. All right, that should be good. So we can start from right here. So the integral of 1 7th u to the 1 3rd du. Pull the 1 7th out front. And you still get, I mean, the integral doesn't change. It's still going to be 1 7th multiplied by u to the 4 thirds with a 3 over 4 in front, okay? It's just now, instead of going right into the limits of integration, we need to go back into the original value of x that we uh, substituted for. So this is still going to be 3 over 28 multiplied by 1 plus 7x to the 4 thirds power, okay? So now we're going to evaluate this between our original limits of integration. So the original limits of integration were x equals 0 and x equals 1. So I need to scroll just a little bit here. So there's a 0, there's a 1. So this is going to give me 3 over 3 over 28 multiplied by 1 plus 7 times 1, all this is to the 4 thirds power, minus parenthesis 1 plus 0 to the 4 thirds power. That gives me 3 over 28 multiplied by 8 to the 4 thirds minus 1 to the 4 thirds. And as you can see right here, let me highlight just so you, just so I can compare them for us. Here's that 3 over 28 multiplied by 8 to the 4 thirds. And here's the 3 over 28 multiplied by 8 to the 4 thirds minus 1 to the 4 thirds. So you can see here, we're going to end up with the same exact answer, which is going to be 45 over 28. So... There is no, hey, this is what you always do. You can do it whenever you want. Yeah, I mean, whatever you feel is a little bit easier for you to kind of navigate your way through. Okay, so I got one more problem for us here, and then we can call it a day. One more problem for us. It's going to be another definite integral, except this time I'm going to use some trig functions because I know uh, those are always really good examples. So here's our last example here. We're going to integrate from 0 to pi over 6, sine of t over cosine squared t dt. Now, let's go ahead, let's use our u substitution. So we're going to let u equal, and I'm going to tell you which one it is here. We're going to let u equal cosine t du, the derivative of cosine is negative sine t times dt. Notice you got a negative 1, so we're going to divide both sides by negative 1. And our final, like, nice presentable u substitution would be u equals cosine of t negative 1, or just how about negative du equals sine t dt. Now, let's rewrite our problem. We're going to do the integral of wherever I see the letter u, I'm going to replace it with cosine. Did I just say? I think I said that backwards. <laughs> wherever I see cosine, I'm going to replace it with a u. And wherever I see sine t dt, I'm going to replace it with a du. I know the du or the du is negative, so I'm going to pull the negative out front and just write a du here. And uh, and yes, I'm going to be changing my limits of integration here because I want you to really see how that works. So with a different color marker for my upper limit. I'll just put an equal sign. So the upper limit equals the cosine of pi over 6. So if you go ahead and you uh, use, use your unit circle, the cosine of pi over 6 is going to be square root of 3 over 2. For the lower limit, 
we're going to get the cosine of 0, and the cosine of 0 is going to be 1. So over on the left-hand side, this is the negative integral from 1 to the square root of 3 over 2 of 1 over u squared du. And I'm just going to rewrite that so it's nice and neat. Negative integral from 1 to the square root of 3 over 2, u to the negative 2, du. And when I integrate that, I'm going to get 1 over u. And we're going to integrate this between square root of 3 over 2 and 1. So 1 over the square root of 3 over 2 minus 1 over 1 is nothing more than just 2 over the square root of 3 minus 1 for our final answer. Let me rate that 3 a little nicer. So I hope this made sense. U substitution is definitely one of those things where... Um, there we go. It's definitely one of those things where you totally got to practice it. Um, as always, if you have any questions, just let me know. But if not, I'll see you in the very last video for the semester. Bye.